So what's happening right now is I am surprising my mom and dad for eat. So I flew from Turkey to Germany and my parents don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. My brother will pick me up. And yeah, I'm excited. Kurmalar da geldi. Bu nereden çıktı? Nereden çıktı ya? Ben şaka mı dedim? Bu bakan. Nereden çıktı? Nereden çıktı? Bro, I don't know why I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Anyways, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you're doing well. By the way, don't get bothered by those hijama cups. Those are my mom's. My mom is reusing my room since I'm a turkey, so it's okay. It's okay. We, we love them. It's sunnah. Bro, my nose is itching and I don't know how to scratch it through my niqab. Whew, wait a second. I know it's been a long time, but today I was like, hey, you know, I feel like talking. I feel like I'm ready to talk online again. I think another reason why I'm not really active is in the Quran camp, it's full with people. It's loud. I don't really have a place where I feel comfortable to film. And since I'm back in Germany for a week or something, I was like, hey, you know, this place has some memories. I have to continue with those. I can't just stop this tradition. Why I was thinking about what should I film and everything, I was like, hey, let me do a Q&A because it's been a long time. Let's start. The first question is, how was the Janaza? I don't know if you guys know, but I've posted about it on my Instagram. So a week ago, my uncle passed away. It was the first Janaza I took place in and like I could experience. And it was really, really interesting. I was in Istanbul, I was in Turkey when I heard the message, when I got the message that my uncle passed away. On that day, 30 people from my family, we drove to my father's home city and we had the Janaza there. And it was really interesting, subhanAllah. It made me realize it doesn't matter how many fights are going on. If you're fighting for, for money, fighting for health, inheritance or something at the end of the day it's for nothing you know the uncle who passed away was the brother of my father and my father and his siblings were fighting a lot when the janazah was happening i was just like thinking like wow okay it doesn't matter how much you fight it's for nothing you know it's for nothing at the end of the day you will die there alone all the fights you had with this person are just for nothing you realize that there it was really eye-opening for me how do you feel about Ramadan ending? SubhanAllah, I don't know how fast Ramadan went by. SubhanAllah, it was so, so fast. Ramadan was really, really a beautiful time for me. You know, for me, Ramadan is a time where you build new habits, where you stay away from bad habits. The most important thing about Ramadan is, okay, you do these habits in Ramadan, but something more important is to keep up with them, to just continue doing those habits. So I'm looking forward to do them, but inshallah, inshallah khair. How's your Arabic course going? So right now I stopped learning Arabic for a bit because there was a time where my routine was like in the mornings I was reading a book throughout the day I was like doing my classes and everything and at the end of the day in the nights I was studying Arabic on my own and I've realized that I don't do justice to the place where I'm being in so I don't give haq to the place where I'm staying because I've realized for example, I am in the Qur'an camp and I don't know how long I will stay there. Maybe I will stay there for a year, maybe for two years or something. But I realized, okay, I'm staying there, but I have so many other focuses I have on. You know, I'm like studying Arabic on my own. I'm like uh, reading a book and I'm doing like a lot of small things. And 
I didn't really put focus on my studies. So I was like, yeah, you know, for now I will stop like studying Arabic for a bit because I really want to give uh, justice to the place I'm staying at. So that's why I stopped Arabic right now, but I will inshallah continue, like definitely inshallah. This question is actually really, really interesting. With which language do you learn Arabic as a trilingual person? So I tried learning Arabic with all three actually. When I was studying Islamic studies in Germany, I was studying Arabic with German. When I went to Turkey, I was studying with a Turkish book. And then I got into Al Andalus Institute and now I'm studying Arabic with English. So I feel like every language has their pros and cons. A lot of Turkish words come from Arabic and that's why it is easier. But I feel like the sentence structure of Arabic is similar to the German sentence structure. So that's why it is easy on that hand. The benefits of studying Arabic with English is it is easier for me to talk about it online. You know, for example, right now I'm studying Islam in Turkish. So when I want to explain something online, I find it kind of hard to find the right words for the things I want to express. Being trilingual and studying a new language has definitely benefits. How to become a better person with good ahlaq? I think it starts with learning the seerah and getting to know the Prophet because he was the one with the best ahlaq on this world. Since I've started studying seerah, it has such a different effect on me. Before I started studying seerah in the Quran camp, I've always knew the seerah as, you know, the Prophet he was born then and then he went to the battles and then he passed away then. But now I'm getting deeper into, into how he was like. How he was acting with people, how he was talking to people, how he was in battle, and it's so different, subhanAllah. And as you get to know about the Prophet, you want to become like the person, you just want to be like him. The more you learn about Sira, you just be like, How? How can a person be like that? How can he be so merciful and so logical as well? And so with emotions as well. It amazes me so much. If you want to learn about Sira, I will put a link into the description. There's the PDF of the Turkish book I'm reading in English. So yeah, check it out. What is your inspiration to get married? Do you think I want to get married? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We need to realize that marriage is a part of our deen. What actually inspires me a lot is every single act you do in marriage you get so many rewards for one act in everyone's fitra in everyone's in everyone's creation is the need for love is the need for having someone next to you of course you want to raise good children so once you die uh, you have people who make dua for you afterwards and everything and uh, this will be like an open sadaqa jariya for you, you know? So there are a lot of reasons why you should get married. Go get married! Like, why are you waiting? <laughs> Have you ever thought about having a podcast? And will you ever be able to do a podcast? Inshallah, yeah, I was actually thinking about doing a podcast. Another reason why I'm a bit insecure about doing a podcast is because I am stuttering a lot. Inshallah, I will do a podcast one day. When you start to become a practicing Muslim, what's the first thing you prioritize to learn about deen? One, aqidah. Uh, you need to know what you're believing in. And second is seerah. You know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a living Quran. You know, in the Quran it says, follow Allah and follow the Prophet. So we're actually obligated to follow him. In the last seerah class, we had we had the Ghazwa, Battle of Uhud, and it was so eye-opening. When the battle of Uhud happened, by then he was a prophet for 16 years and the companions of the prophet peace be upon him, they were so passionate. They had such a deep love for our prophet wasallam. They were fighting with their money, with their bodies, with everything. We need to think about like what can we do right now. We need to get to know how did he talk, how did he eat, how did he walk, how did he do everything. Imagine you're doing something and someone asks like, oh, why did you do that like that? And you just be like, yeah, you know, because our prophet, peace be upon him, used to do it like that. But nowadays, everyone just talks like the one. Before we do any act, we need to think about what the prophet would be pleased with that would Allah be pleased with what I'm doing but uh, that's I think a big lack of our community nowadays yeah subhanallah do you have tips for girls that want to start dressing modest there are a lot of points we have to talk about when it comes to dressing modestly we need to talk about that this is an act of worship so when we dress modestly I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you see this dunya as a place to worship it would be easier for you to do an ibadah in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We're just created to worship. And I'm not saying worship is just praying. Like, you can worship with every act you're doing. And this ayah should be one part of our purpose in life. Second, like, what do you think about being modest? Do you see it as an oppression? Do you see it as you're forced to do that? My teacher, for example, she said, you know, I love, I love my hijab. I love the way I'm wearing everything because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that for me. For example, uh, you're talking to a friend and your friend says, you should wear this dress because this dress looks good on you. I love this dress on you. Because your friend said that, you would be really proud with wearing it. You would be like, if you want me to wear it uh, because you like it, of course I'm gonna wear it. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, cover, we should be proud with wearing it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us with what we're wearing. It's about the point of view. Don't get married. I'm working day and night to be worthy enough. You've inspired me a lot. <laughs> what? I'm impressed, you know? This person is working day and night. Like before you you comment something like that or before you text me something like that, like what are you thinking? I'm just like, oh, okay, um, interesting. <laughs> okay. Could you tell us about your new camera? Sure. It's the ESM50 Mark II. I don't know if you see it. I really like it so far. It is handy. This camera doesn't have a mirror in it. Wait, I'm gonna show you. It doesn't have a mirror in it. Okay, I think that's it with the video. Thank you for watching. Please like and share the video. I know this is a short video, but yeah, I will try to be more consistent. I'm saying that every time, but inshallah. Inshallah this time, inshallah. Comment below what you think. Assalamu alaikum.